Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animate Orange, and it's time to talk a little bit about tips and tools regarding 3D metal model making. I have touched on this subject before very briefly, but when I build these models, I tend to use just my bare hands. That can leave a lot of fingerprints on models, and that can be a little bit annoying. It can be difficult to clean those fingerprints off depending on the model you're making. Sometimes it can be easy, sometimes it can be more challenging. I've tried different things like Q-tips and, and soft cloths, and they tend to get caught on corners and tabs and whatnot. It would seem the best idea would be to wear some sort of glove. Now, I have tried using gloves while building these models, and the gloves seem to seriously restrict my hands. And I really did not, really couldn't do the same things with gloves on that I could without, and had a very difficult time building the models. Recently, somewhat recently, I've gotten a model from MU, and with that, they included finger cots. And these, similar to gloves, only go over your fingers instead of your whole hand. I thought I'd give them a try. They're not so bad. They are not as restrictive as the gloves were in my case. They do cover my fingers, not all of them. I could get more and cover all of my fingers, but basically the main three that I use. I can't say that it completely eliminates the possibility of smudges and fingerprints, but it greatly reduces it. I can say, for me, it doesn't restrict my movement as much, but they do still kind of get in the way. I can't feel what I'm doing as well, and, well, these are a couple of used ones, and they've got holes pulled in poked and pulled out of them because of the tools that I use. They sometimes get in the way and will actually get caught on parts or caught under the tools as I'm trying to shape tiny parts. So they can be a little restricting, a little annoying. Not as much as full gloves for me, but it can help to reduce the fingerprint. So it's a bit of a compromise and I thought I would share that. It had been asked of me in the past about the gloves and I tried them and I didn't like them, but I hadn't tried finger cots. Now, these are the cots that come with the MU models. I like them a fair amount. They're kind of thick. They go on, roll on well, and they don't seem to get in the way as much as some that I picked up off of Amazon. And I have, yes, I have a peanut butter jar <laughs> that I cleaned out to put them in. These were inexpensive, but not quite the same material as the MU. They help keep the fingerprints off, but they seem to be a little less fitting and get in the way a little bit more so again it's a compromise so if you're really annoyed by the smudges and fingerprints and you're not sure what to do about it and you've tried gloves and that's not working might i suggest finger cots it might help now there are situations where i just can't do what i need to do using these finger cots and it certainly helps to keep your hands nice and washed and clean before you build these models still though your fingers can sweat and whatnot, and it can still cause some problems, and you can't really get everything off. But it's all in all, I've said it a few times now, it's a compromise. It helps, it's not a complete solution, it does have its drawbacks, but it's something to help keep your models clean. With some models, it'll work just fine. With other models, with tiny parts, I have more trouble with them. It's just a constant struggle. Another tool news, something that I've also hinted at here and there on my Instagram and Facebook, is that I've been working on designing and 3D printing some specialty tools to help building, to help with building these models. And it's still very much a work in progress. I have a number of ideas that are going on, but I've more or less completed one set. To get started, one of the things that I run into frequently is issues with shaping cones. And I've got wooden dowel rods that I've sharpened one or two, and that certainly helps but there are some limitations because that's just one angle and you run in to a lot of different degrees of angles when you're building this model. So I sat down and created a line of cone shaping tools. And what I have here is what I've gotten so far. There's five different ones and you'll notice they're different colors. You've got yellow, purple, red, green, and white. Now the colors were somewhat random uh, just kind of when I printed them, I went, I'll go with this color today because I had a selection to choose from. So there isn't a lot of meaning behind the color except that the idea here is that each size is assigned its own color. This small size 
is four millimeters in diameter and the cones on each end are slightly different lengths. This is six, purple is six, red is eight, green is 10, and white is 12 millimeters. Now the idea is if you were to get a set of these tools, and I do intend on offering them publicly, it does take a while to 3D print them, so it's, it's taken me a while to get geared up from developing the idea, designing it, and printing it and testing it. Once I finally get to the stage of producing them, that can still take a while to print them out and make them available. The idea is, once I offer these tools, if you have a set of these tools, and you're watching my video and you want to know which tool did I use, which size did I use to shape said part, you don't have to ask. You'll see the color and you'll know which size. If you have a set, you'll have the same set yourself and more easily build that model. That's the idea behind it, at least with these different size tools. Now the other thing I mentioned, or you may notice, is each end is cone shaped, but I've got two different tools here if you look at the different ends, they are slightly different lengths, which gives you a couple of different angles to choose from. So between all of these sets, having two different size ends or length of ends, you've got a number of different angles with which you can use to shape angled cone-shaped parts. Whether it be thrusters or the towers of a castle, you've got quite a number to choose from. You might not be you may not be able to get the perfect size, but you should be able to get fairly close. Now these tools, I'm starting to gear up to where I have a little bit of supply and my intention is to start by offering it to the people who have contributed on Patreon. And once I get a certain amount built up, I will start offering a level on Patreon where if you provide some support, I'll give you a set of tools. If I can get to the point where I'm able to produce them quick enough or able to keep up with demand, because I don't know what the demand is gonna be yet, I might open them up more publicly more easily to get but one of the biggest issues with them being 3d printed i don't actually have a 3d printer myself i am able to use one at the public library which is allowing me to develop them now they can also print them but i have to work with their schedule and their time frames and it can take a while to do it so that is right now the big limitation to getting these out and ready plus there may be some changes in these as time goes on it's hard to say i'm fairly certain these are going to be finalized but who knows? At some point, I would like to get my own 3D printer. I'm gonna have to get a decent one. I don't wanna get one of the inexpensive ones that doesn't do a good job. I need a dual extruder to be able to make most of these tools possible and PVA support to make it feasible, and that's gonna up the price. So at some point, I'd like to get my own printer that will up the ability. There are services out there that I can send these designs off to and they will print for me, but they can get kind of pricey, which will seriously jack up the cost of these tools to the point of why bother. But that's where I stand now. I've got these. I'm working on these cone-shaped tools and bringing them into more availability for others. At some point, I think I'm going to share the uh, STL files for those who want to print them themselves. But I've also got several others I'm working on. Among some of the other ideas, and it's kind of funny because other people have had the same idea around the same time as me, is I've got a long bending tool that I've been working on. And this is basically a long stick with a slit in it. And I've been trying to get the slit the right size so that it's not too thick and too thin. Too thick that it doesn't bend evenly not too thin that you can't fit the metal in it or it prints closed because once you get too thin, 3D printer can only do so much. But that's what this is. This is one of the tools I'm working on. This is the, the latest prototype. It's thinner. The actual overall size of the mod or the tool is thinner so that it can fit in tighter places to bend those difficult long parts. But this one didn't quite print right. I don't know what happened there. So I'm still working on this design. I've also got some tab twisters that I've experimented with. This one had different angles on it. Different, like one side is just flat so you can stick it straight in and twist the tab. The other side has, you can kind of go at an angle and twist. This didn't quite work out right. I've got a round one that the slots are too big. So I'm still working on the tab twister as well. I've also worked with creating tapers although the initial design was a bit larger than I anticipated. 
but a couple of different size and angle tapers, tapers to help shape things like the bodies of airplanes because I have quite a bit of difficulty with that. One nice long taper, one or two or maybe three nice long tapers with different angles to them to help with those shapes. Basically a large cone shaping tool. And there's more ideas in the work. I've got ideas for other bending tools, uh, tools that will make spears or domes, having trouble getting those to 3D print properly tools uh, basically stands at some point i would like to create some stands so you can do like we can do like customized stands to where you can put your model on that they actually have magnets embedded in them so your model won't fall over i've made some out of wood and uh, craft felt a long time ago now i want to do it out of plastic in a 3d printer these are things that have come this is where i'm standing and i haven't said a whole lot because there's a lot to both building these models and trying to design the tools and find the time to 3d print them go to the library, deal with that, because 3D printing is still somewhat new and it's got its hiccups as well. And you've probably seen these tools pop up in a video here and you will continue to see them pop up in videos in the future because basically I print them, I design them, I print them, and I use them to see if they actually do what they're supposed to do so that I can make design changes if needed before I offer them to others. And always, thank you for watching and thank you for your support. Special thank you to my Patreon supporters and those who have supported me through Ko-Fi. For keeping, helping me to keep these videos, these build videos, these explanational videos coming to help you to spread the love in the Metal Earth fam. As always, thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.